Welcome to this week's episode of Growing at Ryman Gardens. My name's Nathan Brockman, and I'm the butterfly wing curator here at the gardens, and I'll be your host this week as we speak with Ed about scented geraniums found here at the gardens, and then I'll take you on a closer look of the effects and control of scale magnolia. Hello, I'm Ed Moran, and we are in the home production garden at Ryman Gardens today to talk about scented geraniums. Uh, this is this year we have decided to bring um, our collection outdoors um, and allow our visitors to see some of the novelty pelargonums and cenodraniums that we have uh, in our collections that are usually kept in our greenhouses throughout the winter. Um, the summer is a great time to enjoy these plants and allows these plants to thrive in our hot, humid conditions, um, which are so great for them to grow in. Cenodraniums are in the genus Pelargonum and they are native to South Africa and were actually brought to Europe in 1774 so they have been in um, gardens for quite a long time. Um, they really do thrive well in our warm hot summers so they make great additions uh, to containers, uh, perennial beds, annual beds, and of course herb gardens. Um, the leaves are extremely fragrant and they contain high concentrations of geranium oils which um, give the plants their distinct smell. Senna geraniums are classified as a tendered perennial, so you will have to bring the plants indoors before the first frost if you are going to save them. Another way of saving the plants is to propagate them um, through cuttings. Culture is relatively easy. They just require regular watering, a full sun condition, and regular fertilization to promote healthy foliage growth. The flowers actually can be removed from scented geraniums to encourage more foliage production, which will in turn increase the amount of oils produced by each individual plant. Um, the scent is achieved best by rubbing or crushing of the leaves. This will release the aromatic oils. This is a more unusual variety of scented geranium in that it also hosts variegated leaves. Um, this is a variety called snowflake and it uh, has a scent similar to some of the other ones. It has kind of a lemon rose type fragrance. Here in the home production garden, we are currently displaying over 30 varieties of scented geraniums. They will be on display until early October. We're out here now just east of the Dunlap Courtyard, and the plant directly behind me is the Magnolia stellata, commonly known as the Star Magnolia. But we're not going to take a look at this plant today, but instead we're going to look at what's on it which is the Neolacanium corniparvum, uh, commonly known as the Magnolia Scale. The Magnolia Scale is one of the largest scale insects found in the Midwest. It turns out that the stationary females cause damage to the plants by sucking on the juices from the plant stems. A byproduct of this process is called honeydew, which is a fluid excreted by their bodies and it ends up usually on the leaves of the plants. This honeydew often encourages the growth of sooty molds on the leaves, but it also encourages visits by an assortment of insects such as ants, flies, wasps, and even butterflies such as the hackberry or red admirals. Scale insects can be one of the most difficult insects to control. One of the best ways to control them is to either prune or hand remove the scales from the particular plant. In the case of the scale magnolia, it's also possible to wait till fall when the crawlers or immatures are present and then use a the horticulture oil to kill them before they have a chance to establish. Even though scale magnolia is a pest, it's still a lot of fun to see the assortment of interesting insects which are drawn to the honeydew produced by the scale and is something worth checking out on your next visit to Ryman Gardens. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode, and if you have questions about Ryman Gardens or would like to see other videos, please visit our website at rymangardens.com. And we'll see you next week for another episode of Growing at Ryman Gardens.